a lot of you may be here because of biotensegrity. What's that? Just out of curiosity. Uh, but I have to give you a little background before we get into it. I, I grew up in Montreal, and very early on, it seemed to me that there was something missing in piano technique as we understand it today. I, you, know, you had the, the amazing example of Horowitz, whom I heard live four times in my life. They were like life-altering experiences. And something, his sound was amazing, his expression was amazing, but also his physical organization was quite unique and, and quite striking. And I started thinking, could there be a, rel a, a link between the way he looks as he plays and the sound that's coming out of the instrument? So I started uh, uh, investigating physical organization, first through Tai Chi. I, I, I've done Tai Chi now for 40 years, and the movements are very, very slow, but they're not just circular. Uh, you never just push somebody. You actually you move your center, and then the energy comes out from the center and through the arm push is much more powerful when you don't put any effort into it, but simply let the energy come out from the center. The, the, the bones have to be extremely well aligned for that to work well. And also in Montreal, I studied under Phil Cohen, who to my mind was the Moshe Feldenkrais of the piano world. He was a, a genius who also was fascinated by this whole relationship of physical organization to sound and artistry. And he has studied with Yvonne Hubert, who produced many of Canada's greatest pianists, and she was a student of Alfred Cortot. Could you just a little bit down? I'm getting a little bit of feedback on the lavalier. Um, now, Cortot taught, one of the things that he taught, uh, which is not unique to his teaching, but striking in his teaching, is that the arm links notes, whereas the fingers produce the notes. This is in, in contrast to the, the weighted touch where the arm is brought in on every single key. So we'll have more about that afterwards, and we're going to see which of those two touches actually re relates better to the idea of biotensegrity. So I worked with Phil for several years, and I was playing better, but I had no idea what he was doing to make me play better. He was moving my arm and the sound. I was completely confused. So then I discovered Feldenkrais method, a method of neuro, neuromotor re-education, which uh, uh, teaches the brain how to better align the bones by sensation. If we do a strong movement, we won't learn anything, but when we slow down the movements and make them softer, and less effortful, and a smaller range, the brain starts to pick up on little parasitic contractions, muscular contractions that have no use. And it can begin to sense that it's doing that and change them. And so again, the skeleton takes over the work of the muscles, just as in Tai Chi. Uh, so synchronicity stepped in at this point. By this time, I had decided to do a Feldenkrais training in order to develop a new approach to piano technique. I had no idea how that would look. And two weeks before my training started, Kemal Gekic walked out on stage Montreal International Piano mm -hmm. Competition, sat down, played, and I said, that's it. His organization was like Horowitz's, the sound was like Horowitz's, the critics all said, he's another Horowitz. And uh, I immediately went backstage and told him, listen, nobody plays like here, that here, nobody can teach me how to play like that here. He says, come to Yugoslavia, study with me, but come soon. It's going to be a war, and get there before it starts. <laughs> That's one of the more interesting in uh, invitations I've received, sure. <laughs> so I went in 1990, and we started working. He was rebuilding my technique from the ground up. I was understanding what he's doing in terms of Feldenkrais, and the beginning to write articles about it. Eventually a book came out in 2003, The Craft of Piano Playing. The DVD, the, uh, by, by the way, Roman and Littlefield, which are here today, the <coughs> publishers from The Craft of Piano Playing. Then a DVD in 2006, two more books in 2010 and 2012, which are over here. And uh, things were going uh, pretty good, pretty good. But at that point, I was still aware of the hand structure, this wonderful structure, this arch structure. The hand was designed to grasp. Draw your thumb across to the fingers, straight. Keep everything straight and draw the fingers across. Now, curl them just a little bit. Curl the thumb, curl the fingers, and try.
try to draw them across the same so the thumb touches the underside of the fingers. It, it become, very quickly becomes virtually impossible. Straighten them again and yeah, look how easy it is. So when we're curling the fingers, we're using the fine motor control in the distal phalange and the medial phalange. But when they're straight, we're availing ourselves of the, the main powerhouse of the hand, which is the, the one little you know, interosseous muscles in this top joint. So if you stand that structure up and you lean into it, then you feel its structure. An arch gets stronger the more weight you put on the keystone. But we're going to discover why, because it's actually a tensegrity structure. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So I was still more focused on the function, on the structure than the function of that structure.